The Sheep Pig by Dick King Smith. Illustrations by Anne Kronheimer. Chapter 2. There. Is that nice? In the farmyard, Fly the Black and White Collie was beginning to the training of her four puppies. For some time now, they'd been shown an instinctive interest in anything that moved, driving it away or bringing it back and turning it to the left or the right. In fact, herding it. They had begun with such things as passing beetles, but were now ready, Fly considered, for larger creatures. She set them to work on Mrs. Hoggett's ducks. Already the puppies were beginning to move as sheepdogs do, seeming to creep rather than walk. Heads held low, ears pricked, eyes fixed, angrily cracking birds as they manoeuvred them about the yards. Good boys, said Fly. Leave them now. Here comes the boss. The ducks went grumbling off to the pond, and the five dogs watched as Farmer Hoggett got out of the Land Rover. He lifted something out of the crate in the back and carried it into the stables. What was that, Mum? said one of the puppies. That was a pig. What will the boss do with it? Eat it, said Fly, when it's big enough. Will he eat us, said another rather nervously, when we're big enough. Bless you, said his mother. People only eat stupid animals like pigs and cows and ducks and chickens. They don't eat clever ones like dogs. So pigs are stupid, said the puppies. Fly hesitated. On the one hand, having been born and brought up in sheep country, she'd in fact never personally acquainted with a pig. On the other, like most mothers, she did not wish to appear ignorant before her children. Yes, she said, they are stupid. At this point, there came from the kitchen window a long burst of words at the rattle of a machine gun, answered by a single shot from the stables, and Farmer Hoggett emerged and crossed the yard towards the farmhouse with his long, loping stride. Come on, said the collie bitch, I'll show you. The floor of the stables had not rung to a horse's hoof in many years, but it was a useful place for storing things. The hens foraged about there and sometimes laid their eggs in the old wooden mangers, and the swallows built their nests against its roof beams with mud from the duck pond, and rats and mice lived happy lives in the shelter until the farm cats cut them short. At one end of the stables were two loose boxes with boarded sides topped by iron rails. One served as a kennel for Fly and her puppies, and the other sometimes housed sick sheep. Here, Farmer Hoggett had shut the piglet. A convenient sack of straw bales allowed the dogs to look down into the box through the bars. It certainly does look stupid, said one of the puppies, yawning. At the sound of the words, the piglet glanced up quickly. He put his head on one side and regarded the dogs with sharp eyes. Something about the sight of this very small animal standing all by itself in the middle of the roomy loose box touched Fly's soft heart. Already she was sorry that she said the pigs were stupid. This one certainly did not appear to be so. Also, there was something dignified about the way that it stood its ground, in a strange place confronted with strange animals. How different from the silly sheep, who at the mere sight of a dog would run around aimlessly crying, Wolf! Wolf! in their empty-headed way. Hello, she said. Who are you? I'm a large white, said the piglet. Blimey, said one of the puppies. If that's a large white, what's a small one? And all four sniggered. Be quiet! Snap fly. Just remember the five minutes ago you didn't know what a pig was. And to the piglet, she said kindly. I expect that's your breed, dear. I meant, what's your name? Well, I don't know, said the piglet. Well, what did your mother call you to tell you apart from your brothers and sisters? Said fly. And then when she hadn't, for the mention of the family, the piglet began to look distinctly unhappy. His little forehead wrinkled and he gulped and his voice trembled as he answered, She called us all the same. What was that? Babe, said the piglet. And the puppies began to giggle until their mother silenced them with a growl. But that's a lovely name, she said. Would you like us to call you that, to make you feel more at home? With this last word, the little pig's face fell even further. We wouldn't my mum, he said very quietly. At that instant, the collie made up her mind that she would foster this unhappy child. Go out into the yard and play, she said to the puppies. And she climbed onto the top of the straw stack and jumped over the rail and down to the loose box beside the piglet. Listen, babe, she said, you've got to be a brave boy. Everyone has to leave their mother. It's all part of growing up. I did so when I was your age, and my puppies will have to leave me quite soon. But I'll look after you if you like. Then she licked his little snout with a warm, rough tongue, her plumed tail wagging. There, is that nice, she said. A little while later, Farmer Hoggett came into the stables with his wife to show her his prize. They looked over the loose box door and saw, to their astonishment, Fly curled around the piglet. 
Exhausted by the drama of the day, he lay fast asleep against his new-found foster parent. Well, we look at that, said Mrs. Hoggett. That'll be old flies, your mother, anything, kittens, dogs, baby chicks, you looked after all of those now, and it is Peg. You lovely. What a picture. Good job, I don't know who will finish up. But it'll be big there. We'll be glad to see back of him, or the arms of him, shall I say. What a shot, wonder how we get it in the freezer. Pity, really, said Farmer Hoggett absently. Mrs. Hoggett went back into her kitchen, shaking her head all the way across the yard, and thought of her husband's soft heartedness. The farmer opened the loose box door, and to say the effort of a word, clicked his fingers to call the dog out. As soon as Fly moved, the piglet woke and followed her, sticking so close to her that his snout touched her tail tip. Surprise forced Farmer Hoggett into speech. Fly! he said in amazement. Obediently, as always, the collie turned and trotted back to him. The pig trotted behind her. Set! said Farmer Hoggett. Fly sat. Babe sat. Farmer Hoggett scratched his head. He could not think of anything to say.